So you mentioned earlier about like, you know, have you been physically sober, but not, as we say, like emotionally sober. Yes. Um, and you actually, uh, you kind of publicly apologized vaguely on social media about being different lately. Yeah. Do you remember that? And you said you were kind of being, you're being more proactive to change whatever unfavorable behavior you notice uh -huh. in yourself. Can you talk a little bit more in de about that in however much detail you want, uh -huh. obviously? Um, because I'm particularly interested in the concept of self-awareness yeah. and how you try to write yourself when you see yourself acting in a way that you don't like. Yeah, and honestly, I don't... I just felt that I put a lot... I have a lot on my plate. Mm -hmm. And over last year, I did put a lot of pressure on myself. Like, mm -hmm. I was launching a company. Um, I have a lot of personal things with family that... Mm -hmm. uh, I don't really want to like, I don't really know if I want to del delve into, yeah, but yeah, I, yeah. like, um, Understood. uh, family members sick, mm -hmm. uh, someone probably the closest family member that mm -hmm. you could have is sick. Yeah. I'll say that, uh, terminally. Mm -hmm. So I found that out last year and, um, I, I didn't know how to process it at first Yeah. and just being busy with everything and trying to make sure I get everything done and showing up. Right. I always mm -hmm. have to show up it's something that I've burned into my memory mm -hmm. almost traumatically. Like when I got sober, like showing up's important. But, yeah, um, I always say I'm almost like, uh, what's the word? I am um, like painfully, uh, oh my God, what is the word? Uh, fuck. It's, it's something like, like I'm like painfully like reliable or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I'm the same way. Like I'm just <laughs> like, like, like if I say I'm going to do something. I like, have to do it. Like I hold myself to like the standard of yeah. like I have to like follow through. Like, and I, think, I just like beat myself up around and it. And I think that's a lot of what it was going through as well. It's yeah. like I beat myself up a lot and like I just – I went through so many years like in sobriety in life just like doing all the things. But like things got really busy last year so I felt like I got – a little bit on burnout, so mm -hmm. I was a little more like I had the less of the pause. Mm -hmm. So I was like really in that when I posted that, it was like more like I just hold myself accountable. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like I did some extravagant, ex no, exuberant yeah, yeah, yeah. thing. Like most people are like, "What the fuck are you talking about?" No, you I know, get that. I get you know. I got that. That that's why I wanted to ask because when yeah, I yeah. read that, I totally understood what you meant. Yeah. Because I f feel the same way often. Like I notice unfavorable behaviors, yeah. Yeah. and I. Uh, you know, like, especially when I'm busy, like, I don't hold myself accountable. And then I feel guilty about it. Yeah. You know? And yeah. I'm like, I know I'm kind of acting shitty. Yeah. And maybe, like, other people aren't seeing it so much. But, like, I see it. Yeah. And, like, this is not good. I think also as an alcoholic and an addict, there's certain behaviors that I'm just not. Like, most people are, like, they don't even see it as a thing. Yeah. And, like, I feel like I have to hold myself accountable for them because I have to be able to, like, understand and be self-aware of them because I'm not allowed to have those behaviors. Yeah. Like I don't allow my, like it happens because I'm not a perfect person. I'm yeah. far from perfect. I have yeah. a lot of flaws, but I feel that I have to be a little more self-aware because it could lead me into a really bad place. Yeah. And that's really where it comes down to it. So there's behaviors that a lot of my friends, you know, in the business you would say would probably, I would just give them a behavior and they'd be like, that's normal. Everybody does that. Yeah. But I can't. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. especially with the responsibilities that I hold in general, mm -hmm. nothing crazy. Maybe it was just to me, like being irritable or like, like even saying something involving gossip. Like mm -hmm. I don't do that. Mm -hmm. Like I don't do that. So if there's a moment where I'm talking about it with someone, it's like, wait, hold on a second. I'm like getting sucked into this vortex that I, I'm yeah. not allowed to get sucked. I caught, I caught myself on that like a while ago and I had to like apologize to that person. Yeah. You know what like I, mean? I should not have said those things. Like I didn't mean to say something that made you feel bad about yourself. Yeah. I thought it was at the time, I thought it was important that you knew, but like now looking back, like it, it, I feel like I shouldn't have said that. And he just looked at me like I was insane. It was like, yeah, because okay. everybody, because we're so in a field yeah. of work that everybody just, just normal. Yeah. And I was like, but that's not like who I am. Exactly. Like, I really that. like try to hold back. Yeah. If you tell me something shitty about somebody, I will almost never repeat it to that person because like, the only thing that's going to do is make that person feel bad. Yeah. And it's also you know? like to like, you know, there's very, I don't have a lot of really, really, really close people in my life. Yeah. And, um, you know, times I let people in and they become the wrong person. Yeah. Instead of getting bitter about it, I just go, okay, I'm never going to, I'm never going to, I'm never going to allow one person or some person that comes into my life to make me change my own character. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, but I'm not also going to put my arm up to people anymore mm -hmm. like I mean when I was younger I think I did that a lot now it's more like I'm willing to accept this and trust this mm -hmm. 
And now you have the opportunity to hold that trust or break that trust. Mm -hmm. And sometimes too, like you're just venting. So you need to find those people. Maybe it's a therapist, maybe it's a friend, maybe it's, mm -hmm. but it's hard because in this industry, it's very, you know, insular to little talks and yeah. stuff like that. And it's just dumb little things that I just, you know, usually like, um, I'm just coming to a time in my life where I just need to make sure that I just like holding my, I guess I just like holding myself accountable. And yeah. just, I want to keep growing. I don't want to like, I don't want to stay in the same place. So sometimes like, it's good for me to be like, hey, I'm acknowledging that I've not I've been less than perfect. Yeah. You know what I mean? On top of it, because, you know, at the end of the day, too, it's like I don't like being the person. I don't want to just give you an overview of like, oh, look at all my success. Mm -hmm. I want to let you know, hey, look, I'm also a person that mm -hmm. works my ass off, like mm -hmm. to a point where sometimes it's unhealthy. Yeah. And also I'm a person that genuinely cares more than I care to admit. Mm -hmm. Um it's kind of one of the reasons I had a hard time getting sober. Mm -hmm. So when I got sober, I was like, God damn, I care. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit, all, I care. All those emotions that yeah, you can no you know longer I mean? like push down with drugs or alcohol. And, and now you got to deal with them. And admitting that I care makes me care less. If that makes sense. Yeah. You know, so at the end of the day, those are just a few of the things that it was about. And just like, honestly, it's just me. It's not a New Year's resolution thing. It was not, nothing like that. It's just like I felt in that moment. Uh, I wasn't feeling my best. I was going through a rough place. I was launching a company. I had some personal stuff going on. I had a lot, a lot on my shoulders mm -hmm. and it was getting really, really overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And I felt that I could be very like, what are you talking about? Like, what are the, like, it was yeah. very like, that's how I felt. I felt everything felt so intense. Yeah. So I felt like people aren't used to that version of me anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's something they were used to when I was in my early 20s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. like, whoa, who's this new guy? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Either who's this new guy? Why is this guy back? You know, yeah. depending on how long you've known me. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Oh my so God. That's pretty much just the take on it, so. Hello, my amazing listeners. You know how much I love bringing this podcast to your ears every week. So if you're looking a way to support the show and get some fantastic perks, I've got just the thing, my Patreon page. With plans starting at just $5 a month, you can be part of our exclusive community. Your support not only helps to keep this podcast going, but it also unlocks some really cool bonuses. Imagine getting access to the live streams of my interviews as they happen. You'll be right in the middle of the action, seeing all of the unedited moments. But that's not all. As a Patreon member, you'll also get exclusive bonus content. I'm talking extra mini episodes where our guests answer questions submitted by you. Plus, you'll have access to my fine art photography and behind the scenes videos, giving you a sneak peek into my creative process. And guess what? If you opt for a discounted year long membership, you'll save even more while supporting the show. Longtime subscribers even get free HRU merchandise as a token of my gratitude. So want to join us? Head over to patreon.com slash hollyrandallunfiltered and become a part of our growing community. Your support means the world to me. Let's make this podcast even better.